Because how important is the endorsement of the Iglesia de Cristo for any candidate? Because neutrality in the face of murder favors the murderer. Good morning and welcome to the show. Our guests for today are Mr. Romel Barria and Rosemary Armenia. Good morning, Mr. Barria and Ms. Armenia. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for your invitation and thank you for having us here. Okay, let's begin the discussion. Let's talk about the viral homily of Archbishop Villegas of Lingayan Tagupan. The homily gained online traction for its message which delved into neutrality in times of oppression. Let's watch this. The Father Villegas presided over the Sunday afternoon Mass held at the Metropolitan Cathedral of St. John the Evangelist last December 12, 2021 and talk about how being neutral empowers the oppressors. Kapag narinito yung mamamatay tao at narinito yung pinapatay, kapag neutral ka, kakampi ka ng mamamatay tao. Because neutrality in the face of murder favors the murderer. Alimbawa, magnanakaw ka at saka isang ninakawan. Pwede ka bang neutral doon? Hindi. Kapag neutral ka doon, pumapanig ka na doon sa magnanakaw. Sapagkat the moral choice is to defend the victim. The moral choice is to defend human life. Dagdagan pa natin. Alimbawa, naririto ang sinungaling Naririto yung troll at nandito yung truth. Nandito yung troll farm, nandito yung truth farm. Neutral ka dyan? Hindi ka pwedeng neutral. Kasi kapag neutral ka dyan, ibig sabihin, hindi mo pinipili yung mabuti. At kapag neutral ka dyan, ibig sabihin, isang paamo nandoon na sa trolls. Nandoon na sa kasinungalingan. When we are neutral, and there is an oppression, we end up empowering oppressors. The Gaudan Sunday homily of Archbishop was uploaded on the official Facebook page where it has gained 16,000 likes and love reactions, 1,900 comments, and more than 390,000 shares on the social networking platform. The church stands to choose what is right and moral and not to be neutral as it is an indication of enabling the oppressors by siding with the one being oppressed. So, basically, social judgment theory states that it depends on our own understanding on the message we receive, if we will accept or reject it, based on our own beliefs and whether or not it falls in our acceptance range. So, it depends on us if we want to follow what the church says or not. In social judgment theory, we judge things. We, it is about judging situations. We base our next action on our own understanding about the given situation. In this case, the church and other religious organizations are persuading us to side with their stand. We may side with them or oppose them. Regarding this case, just what Mr. Barya had said earlier, we have different beliefs that also applies to every religious organization. We are on our latitude of rejection because we oppose them. We think that they are not practicing their right of suffrage and their freedom to choose just because of that. The church and other religious organizations serves as the final push towards making our final decision. They are trying to persuade us to vote for what is right, trying to encourage us to stand for the truth. The truth in this case is the truth that they know or believe. In other words, they are trying to persuade us in believing what they believe. They are trying to implant their own ideas on our mind. Yes, that is true. But at the end of the day, it is our own decision and right to decide or to vote who we want. They may suggest and encourage us, but the final decision is on us. Different people also have different perceptions, we really have different religions, that is why you also have different beliefs. The video presented earlier is persuading us to do the right thing or to vote for the right person. Father Socrates Villegas also said that neutrality in the face of murder favors the murderer. This is the catchiest phrase that can shift the latitude of everyone from 
non-commitment to acceptance or from rejection to acceptance. Thank you so much for joining us. How important is the endorsement of the Iglesia de Cristo for any candidate? Uh, the endorsement, I think, of uh, the religious group Iglesia de Cristo has uh, two main uh, advantages. First is that uh, their, their sheer number, uh, it was mentioned that uh, their, their flock is around uh, more than 2 million. Uh, that's an important uh, size of possible voters, although we don't really know who among the 2 million membership will actually vote uh, and is part of, of the... Ms. Armenia, what can you say or what is your intake about this vote endorsement? I read an article also. Remember that in 2016, only 77% of Iglesia Ni Cristo members voted for Rodrigo Duterte, whom the church endorsed. This year, Robredo supporters posed another challenge to the Iglesia vote. It was stated there that there is a devout Iglesia Ni Cristo youth member in Cavite named Bella, a 21-year-old. She was born and raised in an INC household. She attends worship services and even joined choir and became a church secretary. But despite her faithfulness to the INC, she was disappointed but not surprised when the church endorsed Ferdinand Marcos Jr. and Sara Duterte. But Bella, remaining firm in her beliefs, decided to still vote for Lenny Robredo and Kiko Pangilinan. This is an example of whatever your church may say or endorse to you. It always depends on us, on what we believe and want. We are the one who will decide after judging the matter. That is what we are talking about a while ago on how social judgment theory works. And I know that aside from Bella, there are also other INC devoters who thinks the same way as her. Alright, thank you for being here with us, Mr. Barria and Ms. Armenia. I am your host, Jessica Spacha. We'll be right back.